I got all three M1 Macs this year, the Mac Mini, the MacBook Air, and the MacBook Pro. I used them all, and I think they each represent a great value for the right user. But which one's the best? I'm gonna talk about it. I'm also gonna bring up some reasons why some users shouldn't upgrade to these devices. So if you're considering getting one, or if you already got one, and you wanna make sure that you got the one that's the best value for what you need, this video should help. We'll get the price later, but the Mac Mini is the best value when you factor in performance and cost. Clearly, the first decision has to do with portability, and this may not be as clear a choice as you might think. Obviously, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro are laptops, and the Mac Mini is a desktop. So if you absolutely need to take this device on the go, the Mini is not really an option. But a lot of users also have an iPad, so I would suggest that you consider whether you actually need this much processing power with you to justify the added cost. If all you're doing is typing or taking notes, browsing the web, just you know watching some content, it might actually make more sense for you to use your iPad or other tablet for that and then set up a dedicated workstation at home. This way you're getting the power and additional features of the mini without sacrificing portability. If you're a creative professional or someone else who needs access to a complete file management system and a full suite of desktop editing apps on the go, then one of the notebooks, of course, is your best option. And the main difference between the two laptops are that the MacBook Pro is 25% brighter, it's got longer battery life, better sustained performance, which I'll get to in a minute, and the touch bar, which I absolutely love, but I know not everyone does. The MacBook Air is slightly lighter than the MacBook Pro, and as far as portability, you're not really going to notice that difference when it's in a bag with some other accessories. The MacBook Air also has a tapered design where the front is lower than the back, which in my opinion provides a more comfortable typing experience. Both use the same keyboard and the Pro has a slightly larger trackpad and both trackpads are like the best ones that I've ever used on a laptop. If you're interested in a more detailed comparison of the two laptops, I'll link to this video at the end. Moving on to performance, all three are excellent for the price, but let's talk about some differences. And I wanna remind you to look at what you actually need when you're making a purchase. If money is not an issue, then sure, always get the more powerful option. But for the majority of us, this is a pretty major purchase. Ranking these three in terms of all around performance, I would put the Mini first, then the MacBook Pro, then the Air. This of course takes into account sustained performance, meaning running the device at max capacity for at least eight to 10 minutes or playing more demanding games, which I'll get to later on. I won't bore you with the numbers, but in shorter tests like Geekbench, the performance is essentially identical between all three of these. But when you're running something like Cinebench, which really stresses out the system, then we see some more noticeable differences. The Mini and the Pro have an active cooling system or a fan, which helps them run cooler when pushed to the limit. This makes it much less likely that the system will heat up to the point where it needs to throttle back performance. The Mini, not being constrained by the dimension or thickness of a laptop, has a larger fan and larger vents, so it dissipates heat more effectively, both actively and passively. Now coming in third is the MacBook Air, which only uses passive cooling, which means that it will throttle back performance sooner. Now working in Premiere Pro has been great on all three, and the performance for Final Cut is absurdly good for the price, again, even on the MacBook Air. Going back to something I already mentioned, think of how you're going to use this device. For the majority of users, stressing their system to 100% for eight or 10 minutes is just not a real life situation. And in the rare occasions where it is, waiting an extra two to three minutes because of the throttled performance isn't really the end of the world. If on the other hand, this is something that you do regularly, then of course, it's a good idea to go with one of the more powerful options. Speaking of power, let's quickly discuss battery life. Obviously, if you're using the Mac mini, you're all set. And when looking at the two notebooks, the Pro has better battery life. Now, how much better will depend on what you're doing, and Apple reports 20 hours of battery life on the Pro versus 18 on the Air with similar configuration and use. I can do a more detailed battery life test if that's something that you're interested, so let me know in the comments section. For my use, I've not noticed a significant enough difference between the two 
for that to be the sole reason I would get the Pro. And that's mostly because both of these are so much better than my previous laptop. I will say that the Pro definitely has better battery life. So if that's a major consideration for you, keep that in mind. I touched a little bit on price and value earlier, so let's get that out of the way. The entry level pricing for the Mini is $699, for the Air, it's $9.99, and for the Pro, it's $12.99. So clearly the Mini is the least expensive option. Of course, you'll need to add a monitor, keyboard, and a mouse at the very least. So if you're upgrading from another desktop setup, then you probably already have that. And if you're not, you can get those pretty inexpensively where you're still under the cost of the MacBook Air and with better performance. Now, all three Macs come with a new powerful M1 chip, and all three are available with an eight core CPU and eight core GPU. The MacBook Air is also offered in an eight core CPU and a seven core GPU, which is actually what you get for $999. So if you wanna see the price difference with the configuration option being the same, we'll have to price all three with 512 gigs of internal SSD storage, eight gigs of RAM, and then the eight core CPU and eight core GPU versions. In that case, the Mac mini will be $899, the Mac Air will be $1249, and the MacBook Pro will be $1499. If you watch my M1 MacBook Air review, then you heard me say that I would only upgrade to the eight core GPU if I was already upgrading the internal storage from 256 to 512, at which point that extra GPU upgrade is only 50 bucks. And as far as the max configuration, all three can be upgraded to two terabytes of storage and 16 gigs of RAM. Although again, if you've seen my other videos, I definitely recommend looking into some external SSDs and saving a lot of cash. Next, let's talk about IO, which has been a little bit of a disappointment this year. The MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro come with just two Thunderbolt slash USB 4 ports and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. I'm okay with that on the MacBook Air, although I do wish that they put one port on each side so that I could charge it from either direction. On the Pro, I personally expected more. The previous model at least gave us the option of four ports, which would have reduced the likelihood of needing a hub. Moving to the Mac Mini, we're getting two Thunderbolt slash USB 4 ports, two USB-A ports, an HDMI 2.0 port, a gigabit ethernet port, and a headphone jack. Again, the previous model offered more ports and the ability to upgrade to a 10 gigabit ethernet port. The additional USB ports would have been nice for a lot of users, whereas the 10 gigabit upgrade would only come into play for a handful of users. Regardless, if you're getting one of the new M1 Macs, you're probably living that dongle or hub life. Luckily, there are some really good options out there and I'll link to a few of my favorites in the description. In terms of IO, if we're putting them head to head, then of course the mini has the edge, but it's a desktop, so that's to be expected. Now, one of these reasons why these ports or a hub might be important to some users is using an external display. Now, my main workstation has six displays, which I don't expect any of these devices to support, but here's what you get. With the Mac Mini, there's support for one external 6K display and one 4K display. And both the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro only support one external display with a resolution of up to 6K. So essentially, you're able to get a two display system in each case, unless you wanna use your MacBook Air and MacBook Pro docked, or you just wanted to work on two larger displays, which I think a lot of MacBook Pro users would want. Let me know in the comment section, is this something that matters to you? Are you using an external display with your laptop? And just in general, how many displays do you use? Now, before I move on to the next section, if you like what you've seen so far and have gotten value from this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. It helps the video and the channel, and it lets me know what kind of content you like so that I can make more of it. And if it's your first time here, hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can stay up to date on all the latest Apple gear and tutorials. If you remember, earlier in the video, I talked about getting an external SSD and then saving money. This is another advantage that I'm gonna give the Mac Mini because I can just keep the external SSD attached and it's not really an inconvenience like it could be with the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air. Either way, I always think they're a great option and you get the added benefit of being able to use them with multiple devices. Now, next I wanna talk about video calls. The two notebooks obviously have a camera, microphone, and speakers built in, whereas the Mac Mini only has a small speaker, which in fairness, I guess would work for video calls. 
The camera on both laptops is the same 720p, not so great camera. And there's a slight difference in the quality of the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro's mics and speakers. If you wanna hear sound samples, remember that I'm gonna to link to the comparison at the end of this video. If you choose to use the Mac Mini and you buy a dedicated camera, you'll definitely be able to get better video quality. And I mentioned this in other videos, regardless of what camera you're using, always consider your lighting for the best results. Now I wanna to get to some reasons why some users may not want to upgrade to one of these Macs. First, if you're relying on running Windows apps on your current machine, that's something that's not currently supported on either of these, so you'll probably wanna wait. If you're buying a new device for gaming, that's not really the strength of any of these, and I would still put them in the order of Mac Mini, MacBook Pro, and then MacBook Air at the bottom. It's not that you can't game on these, but just be aware of the limitations before you buy. Finally, if you need even higher level performance on a laptop and you're not in a rush, then it may make sense for you to hold off and see what this year's MacBook Pro will bring. I talk about this more in this video right here, and if you wanna see the comparison between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, check out this video right here. I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to click right here to join the community. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.